Hello and welcome. So in this video, we're doing an, another application of the SOA model. This is the full model with uh, technology growth and population growth. And we're going to look at the effect of a change in the rate of depreciation. So my plan of attack is going to be we're going to analyze things through the SOA diagram. I'll also kind of pull out some of the equations that we've worked through, but uh, the focus will be on the SOA diagram and how depreciation changes affects it. Uh, and then we'll go to the time series graphs for per effective worker, per capita level, uh, per effective worker levels, um, you know, K hat and Y hat, per capita levels of uh, capital output investment and consumption, and then aggregate levels of outputs and uh, capital. Great, so let's look at the diagram, and uh, we're thinking about a change in the depreciation rate. So in our model, the depreciation rate here is set by delta. So if we change the depreciation rate, just working with our solo diagram, um, well, the other thing I should point out is I'm going to kind of assume that uh, we are in the city state before we get this change. So we're sitting at that city state and capital perfective worker is at that value K star. Uh, you know, everything's in its balanced growth path. Uh, you know, outputs growing at the uh, growth rate of technology plus the growth rate of population. All of our per capita levels are growing at the growth rate of technology. You know, everything's in its like little balanced, nice looking stuff. Uh, and then the question is, how do things change when we ch change this depreciation rate? Well, if we change the depreciation rate, uh, this blue line, which is our break-even investment line, that is uh, given in a certain amount of capital per effective worker, this line reflects how much additional capital needs to be added to the capital stock just to keep things constant, right? Um, so if we increase uh, the value of delta, that's gonna increase, that's gonna shift upwards um, this break-even investment line. And so the, the old intersection where the steady state level of capital per effective worker was a K star, if this blue line shifts up, the new steady state level is gonna be somewhere down here. So looking at this visually, uh, this is a nice little Wolfram Alpha demonstration. If we increase the depreciation rate, you can see the slope of that break-even investment line has gone up, which is pushing down the, new, the steady state level of capital per effective worker down to this lower level. So that's how things work out in the diagram. Let's also think about just looking at uh, our equations, like growth levels and shift levels. So these are our output and uh, capital per effective worker. Um, remember, these are in the steady state with this model, so they don't grow at any rate. But these things do affect, they do have level effects, right? So depreciation, we could see if depreciation is higher, then we expect um, capital per effective worker to be lower, which we just saw in the diagram. And then output per effective worker, that's just a function of capital per effective worker. So you expect the, basically the same change. Um, so we see a uh, lower, uh, if depreciation has gone up, then we expect output per effective worker to be shifted down to a lower level. Dealing with um, per worker levels or per capita levels, um, we know that the growth rate is a function of the growth rate of technology. That's what G by itself is, the growth rate of technology. That hasn't changed at all. So the growth rate of these per worker levels haven't changed. However, depreciation rate is there, so we can we expect a level effect. So if depreciation increases, we expect a, a lower level for capital per worker, output per worker, investment and consumption per worker. And then looking at the um, aggregate levels, so labor is kind of its own little special things. It grows at growth rate N, which is the growth rate of the population. But all these other things, they grow at population growth plus technology growth. Those things have a change. So the growth rate of capital and output and investment and consumption, all those things, unchanged. They're going to continue to grow at a new, the same same rate. However, we will see level effects because uh, depreciation does have a level effect on capital output and, and investment and consumption. Uh, and if depreciation is higher, we expect it the level will be pushed down. So what does that look like in terms of a time series graph? So I prepared, uh, I prepared this nice little spreadsheet. It's actually not too difficult to do. You could probably do it pretty easily yourself. Um, all we're doing is plugging in um, arbitrarily chosen numbers into the equations like those formulas that we had derived earlier. So, you know, starting with some level of aggregate capital, um, we plug that into the production function, get some level of outputs, so on and so forth. You know, it's just plugging in the formulas. Um, what I do is, uh, you know, I arbitrarily choose random levels for um, uh, savings, depreciation, everything. And then what I do is I change the depreciation rate. So I uh, drive up the depreciation rate and we can see what happens. So if you remember the SO diagram, we, uh, I'm saying that we were at some initial level of steady state capital per effective worker. That was an initial K star. And then if we increase the depreciation rate, that shifts down the steady state level. So this dotted line, you can think of it as that new steady state level of capital per effective worker. However, 
remember there's a, a, a capital accumulation equation that determines where what capital per effective worker is going to be. Uh, the important thing to remember is it's not an instantaneous change. So it, it's a gradual change. So even though there's an, an instantaneous change in the steady state level of capital per effective worker, um, the actual current level, you know, through time of capital per effective worker is only going to be a slow, gradual change defined by that capital accumulation equation, defined by that, uh, we also call it the law of motion of capital. Um, so, yeah, you basically have this asymptotic approach to the new steady state. Uh, and initially, this is going to be a very fast growth down. Um, why is it a fast shift down? Well, it's a fast shift down because, like, you know, what determines how fast that shift is? So you can see how the slope is very fast initially, and then it kind of approaches more slowly. So what determines that that speed? Well, um, if let, let's so this is the let's suppose that this is the new steady state level of uh, capital per effective worker. You know, after the change, uh, and suppose we're some level way way over here. You know, that's where our old steady state level of capital per effective worker is. Um, this is the investment line. That's how much is being added in terms of investment. And then this is the break-even investment line, which is the amount of capital that needs to be added to the cap to the capital per effective worker stock in order to keep things constant. We can see that the difference between the two is very large um, when the current level of capital per effective worker is way over here. So that means because the difference here is very large, um, that means we're going to be losing quite a bit of capital in that initial period. Um, and so the difference between these two lines is how much capital per effective worker is, is being reduced in that period. Um, since this thing is very, very large, we can see that this change in capital per effective worker is very large. It's defined again by the difference between these two. Um, but, so you know, you can imagine one period, right? The, the amount, this blue line, that's required to keep capital per effective worker constant is significantly larger than the amount that's actually added. So the difference between this two is how much capital shifts, right? So the next period, um, the difference is still, you know, some positive, some, some significant amount, but it's not quite as big as it was before. So that's how much the capital perfected worker is reduced. Uh, we then shift in that amount and we see, you know, you kind of see it's like a slow, it's converging over there, but it's the, the rate at which it converges to the new steady state level slows down. So in terms of the time series, we see that the initial moves were like big sharp moves, but as the, um, the current level of capital effective worker approaches the new steady state level, it, it's a very gradual and slow approach. Um, so turning to output per effective worker, again, that's just a function of capital per effective worker. So the transition here is uh, nice and slow. So now turning to per capita levels, um, we're focusing on, on logs here. Uh, because if we didn't log it, we'd have these growth rates, right? Uh, the exponential growth. So by taking the log, we turn those growth rates into a nice straight line. So this line, the slope of this line is defined, since this is per capita levels, this, the growth rate of capital per worker is defined by the growth rate of technology. Um, so yeah, that's the, the first thing. So right at this moment, this dotted line is where I increase the depreciation rate. And we see that we shift down from this level, this higher level, down to this lower level. And then, um, you know, output per worker and uh, investment and consumption per worker, very similar story we see below. So consumption per worker shifts from this higher level to this lower level. However, the growth rate doesn't change. Same thing for investment. There is some transition dynamics, you know, uh, you know, you're initially started on going along here when uh, we're in our steady state and then there's a reduction but then it eventually gets back to that the same growth rate so there's there is some dynamics there with the transition where you have the growth rate of output worker decreasing for a while but eventually it gets back to the growth rate uh, that's defined by the growth rate of technology and then very similarly similarly looking at the aggregate levels you know, aggregate levels of capital and output have uh, basically the same story, just with those things. Uh, and then the growth rate of capital uh, and the growth rate of aggregate output is defined by two growth rates. It's the growth rate of population plus the growth rate of technology. Uh, and then just touching on intuition, you know, what is depreciation? Uh, probably like the best example I see of depreciation might be like the effects of weather. So suppose somehow uh, weather is, is much worse 
than it was before. That's sort of the equivalent of increasing the depreciation rate because this increased weather, like you know, wears down capital more, destroys buildings, that sort of thing. So uh, if you ex you know if you see the, the kind of weather things to affect things worse, you know, to, to be a bigger negative effect, uh, that's going to destroy a larger portion of the capital stock from period to period to period. And so in terms of like steady state values, that's going to decrease our um, output per person. Um, so kind of our, I guess consumption per person is our best proxy for welfare. So it's, you can see how, uh, you know, with a worse weather, it's not really affecting growth rates because those growth rates are defined by like technology, but it definitely puts us at this lower level uh, this worse off level um, with higher depreciation. Cool, so hopefully that was helpful. Uh, you know, you can imagine if you were asked the reverse question, what's the effect of a decrease in depreciation? Uh, you know, you have this level shifted upwards um, and everything else would be more or less the same, um, except for the, maybe the intuition. So yeah, again, hopefully that was helpful. If it was, be sure to give it a thumbs up and uh, thanks and have a good day, bye.